In this video, we talk about the next concept amongst the topic of composition table or operation table. We have already seen how to frame or draw a composition table. In this video, we will be seeing a very standard numerical problem that usually comes in our exams which is the concept of addition modulo n. We will also see how to draw the composition table and let us understand by reading the definition and let us see the concept in some depth. Let us read the definition of addition modulo n. Let n be a positive integer, so n is a positive integer. And what is the restriction given on n that it is greater than 1 means n is greater than 1 is given to me. And what else is given that a and b belong to zn where z is a set. What is the set of z comprising of? It is comprising of different elements which are totally n in number ranging from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on till n minus 1. Now what is this term addition modulo n what do you mean by this modulo n so modulo just is denoted by congruence modulo or multiplication modulo this word is very much common and you will be finding it almost everywhere in mathematics especially when you talk about binary operation so what happens is addition modulo is denoted as a plus n b that means you are basically adding two things and then you are taking the modulo. Modulo means you will have to find the remainder and the remainder should be very much least. So the least non-negative remainder when a plus b is divided by n. Now again some people might be confused. So let's see an example and then we'll understand what do you mean by addition modulo n. You are very much aware that zn is a set which has how many elements n elements and they will be ranging from 0 1 2 till n minus 1 suppose I talk about the concept wherein I have the set Z and the set Z is of how many elements 5 elements with 0 1 2 3 4 as its elements and we are supposed to find addition modulo 5 that means we are supposed to find modulo 5 and that modulo should be addition modulo. So how to find out the addition modulo what is the technique the technique is very simple first of all draw the composition table as such so you draw the composition table you write plus 5 here because we are talking about addition modulo so plus should come and then what you do is you just write down these elements in the first row and the first column coinciding this plus sign so 0 1 2 3 and one more 4 would come this can be joined And similarly 0 1 2 3 and 4 would come I would be presenting it this manner and now what happens is these elements when already arranged in the first row and the first column would help me to frame the whole of the table first let's join this grid and make it a complete 5 by 5 matrix now since this is complete let's see how to go about it I am supposed to find addition modulo 5 so the word addition just tells me that first of all I have to add things and side by side divide it by 5 to obtain the result remainder let's see how to do it 0 plus 0 is what 0 0 divided by 5 is what 0 divided by 5 means 5 is outside 0 is inside so it is nothing but 0 only so the remainder is what remainder is 0 so you can write 0 here now again 0 plus 1 what is 0 plus 1 1 1 divided by 5 will give me what remainder 1 only what is 0 plus 2 2 2 divided by 5 will give me what remainder 2 similarly for 3 similarly for 4 let's come 
to the next row of 1, 1 plus 0. This is the way we go about it. So 1 plus 0 is what? 1 and 1 divided by 5 is what? Remainder 1. 1 plus 1 is what? 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 divided by 5 remainder is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 divided by 5 remainder is 3. If at all somebody has a confusion, let's do 1 to 2 things first. 2 plus 1, I said it is 3. And the remainder when you divide 3 by 5 is what? It is 3 only and not 5. People usually get a confusion because 5 zeros are, is 0. And what is the remainder? That is 3. We are supposed to write the remainder in the squares. Right? Now, moving further, 1 plus 3 is 4. The remainder is what? 4. Now, this is something interesting. 1 plus 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. And what is the remainder when 5 is divided by 5? Let's see. 5 divided by 5. 5, how many is are 5? 5 ones are 5. What is the remainder? Remainder is 0. So you are not supposed to write 1. You are supposed to write the remainder. So what is the remainder? It is 0. Similarly, we can be filling the whole table quickly. 2 plus 0, 2. Remainder is 2. 2 plus 1, 3. Remainder is 3. 2 plus 2, 4. Remainder is 4. Again, 2 plus 3, 5. What is the remainder when 5 is divided by 5? 0. 2 plus 4. Again, 6. What is the remainder when 6 is divided by 5? Let's see 6 divided by 5. So you have 5 outside, 6 inside. 5 how many is are? There is no such 6 in the table of 5. So the remainder is just 1. We write here 1. Filling the table again, 3 plus 0 gives me 3. 3 plus 1 gives me 4. 3 plus 2 gives me 5. Remainder is 0. 3 plus 3 gives me 1, 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 divided by 5, the remainder is 2. Similarly, 4 plus 0 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, remainder is 0. 4 plus, 3 is, 4 plus 2 is 6, remainder is 1, 4 plus 3, remainder is 2, 4 plus 4, remainder is 3. Now, what is the use of filling this composition table? Basically, from the composition table, I can find out three things in addition to the closure. So it makes four things. First of all, we need to check whether the closure property is followed or not. I write it here, closure property. In the previous video also, we talked about this. That means closure property is followed when I can say that every row or every column doesn't have anything repeated. Take the first column, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1. Do we have 2, 2 times or 3, 5 times? No. Everything has come only once. And the other important thing, all the elements of the table are actually from this set only. There is nothing such as 6 in the set and there is nothing such as 6 here also. Right? So the closure property is followed when two things happen. Which two things happen? No repetition. I write it in short just to understand no repetition REP just for short and next what all all elements very short all elements from the set from the same set from the set Z right all elements from the set Z is what is written in the second point and the first is no REP means no repetition so we've seen how to find out the closure property now, what about commutativity? First, you see what is the diagonal. The diagonal is what? We have something called as 0, 2, 4, 1, 3 as the diagonal. Now, if you observe the diagonal and you observe whether it is symmetric below and above, then it is commutative. So, above it is 1, here also it is 1. Here it is 2, 3, here also it is 2, 3, here it is 3, 4, 0, here also it is 3, 4, 0, here it is 4, 0, 1, 2, here also it is 4, 0, 1, 2, that means it is symmetric. Repeating again, for what? For commutativity.
For commutativity, what do we need to see? We will see the diagonal and we will see symmetricity. We will see whether it is symmetric both below and above. That is it. So since it is symmetric both below and above, this composition table is commutative. Now let's move on to the next concept. The next concept is what? The presence of identity element. What about identity element? in the composition table identity element so the identity element would be the one from the composition table which will have the same things repeated all over again let's write this word element above so as to make it in a line identity element yes we are talking about identity element in this composition table, what is the value for which you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 vertically repeated? Here it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, yes. So, for this 0, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 repeated. But for other values, you don't have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, you have 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, you have 2, 3, 4, 0, 1. So, you need to see where is this order repeated? Where else is this order repeated? So it is repeated in 0. So identity element is 0 here. First thing. The other thing, what do you need to see? You need to check for identity element the repetition of the same column. You saw that it was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here also it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 under 0. So this is identity element. The last concept that we studied was what? It was inverse. So for the presence of inverse, we see from the table how to find the inverse. Firstly, in the table, you check the identity element. What is the identity element? Zero. Wherever zero is present, just mark it. Zero is present here. You just mark the grid, you just shade it a bit. Where else is zero present? Zero is present here. Shade the grid or you can just circle it. It is according to you. Where else is zero present? Zero is present here. Shade it. Where else is zero present? Zero is present here. And where else is zero present? Zero is present here. So. I have marked wherever the identity element is present. Now for inverse, the story is very simple. You just have to see the intersection. You move from here and you obtain the value here. That means you go both horizontally and vertically towards the identity element. So when I started from here, I started from 4 and I reached here. Now I saw above it was 1. So that means what all are inverses of each other? 4 and 1 are inverses of each other. So 4 inverse is equal to 1. Right? Now after I have done this row, let's move to the row above. Moving to the row above. The row of 3. You move forward. You reached here. You reached here. You looked upward. It was 2. So that means 3 and 2 are the inverses of each other. So I can say that 3 inverse is equal to 2 or 2 inverse is equal to 3. Moving one more step above, I see 0 here. I move from 2 towards 0. I see what is above, 3 is above. That means 2 inverse is also equal to 3. And last but not the least, I start from this row, from first row, I mean from 1 to 4. So 1 and 4 are also inverses of each other, that means 1 inverse is equal to 4. And the last one, 0 is here, you move forward, you find it is 0, you just look upwards, it is again 0. So 0 is the inverse of 0. That means, in these, we have already found out what are the inverses. 
So if somebody asks me what is the inverse of 0, I would just say it's 0. Somebody asks me what is the inverse of 2, I would say it is 3. Somebody asks me what is the inverse of 4, so inverse of 4 is 1. So in this tedious video and lengthy one, we've seen all about finding the inverse, the identity element and commutativity from a composition table. Let me repeat it quickly. For a composition table, you need to first frame the table, fill the elements according to the definition given. For checking whether it is commutative or not, you just draw the diagonal, check the symmetricity above and below the diagonal, which we've already written commutativity is basically symmetricity only. After you have checked whether it is commutative or not, you check about the identity element, how to find the identity element, you just see wherever 0 is present or anything as such is present wherein you find the same column repeated. I found out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 was here and wherever I had vertically 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 that was my identity element. Where was it? It was in the first column itself. So 0 is my identity. What about the inverse? You shade the identity element square. I shaded the identity element square wherever I could and then you move horizontally and look vertically and then these are mutually the inverses of each other. So in the next video we look quickly towards the next example for finding whether the given operation table or the composition table is commutative, what is the identity element and what are the invertible elements.